You are flying over the moon, viewing the surface in angles and perspectives as you would on Earth and in the following examples.
photograph you just experienced in the previous animation was taken from this section of the moon. This is the area near my favorite of all crater anomalies called Aristarchos. In order to get the maximum and highest resolution images, I downloaded close to 250 photos from the website at the largest and highest resolutions so I could go in there and use the animation programs such as Adobe After Effects and Apple's Motion to zoom in closest views of each photograph I am presenting in this film. In my previous film, Moon Rising, I presented black and white Apollo photographs I had airbrushed in Photoshop because that was part of the process I went through in the making of that documentary. In this film, you are viewing full color natural photographs I downloaded from the NASA USGS website. These are the real colors of the moon. Also, for the record, so people don't get misled or confused by the debunkers out there, I am showing you what the difference is from the natural color photography and false color imagery of the moon. This is a grayscale or black and white image of one section I downloaded from the USGS website. This is a false color download of the same image. And this is the natural color image of the same scene. There is a major difference between the three. In this film, I am presenting the full natural color photography of the moon. Because the color photographs allow us to see more details of structures, craters, and other anomalies on and above the moon's surface, it is no surprise why NASA, astronomers who are in the know, observatories, and all the other space agencies involved in exploring the moon continue to perpetuate the lie that the moon is gray and colorless.
In my film Moon Rising, Kerry Martinek presented compelling evidence on NASA from his research archives. Kerry sent me the following UFO photos and clips captured by NASA, the shuttle, and the International Space Station to present here in my film Luna. During the end of Apollo 14's mission to the moon, 
after Edgar Mitchell and Arnold Shepard were already inside the limb, this strange thing appears underneath and then jumps off. We don't know what it is, but if it had been a piece of the craft falling off, then we are sure someone at Mission Control would have alerted the astronauts that something had fallen off the craft. We call this the Apollo 14 Moon Monkey because it seems to resemble a primate of some kind. If it is a primate, it would be approximately three feet tall. Whatever it is or whatever it was, it is holding on to the top area of the limb before letting go, and then it seems to lunge forward as an ape would. Now, there are only two explanations since the crew was already inside the tightly sealed craft. This could be a creature jumping off the limb on the moon, or it's a creature jumping off the limb in the studio where this was being filmed. There's no two ways about it. It has to be one or the other. Another strange thing that appeared during the Apollo 14 mission is this white object that seems to fly in out of nowhere. We don't know what it is, but it flies in the picture.
Each full color photograph in this film contains so many things going on all at once, I find it hard to zoom in pan to all the right sections of the photo. I have missed certain things many times while I zoomed into one particular area where I passed by a certain anomaly that I overlooked and that after I viewed the film I realized there was one structure I should have zoomed into. I get this many times from frustrated viewers out there that complain about seeing an artifact that I passed by and that was as clear as day but that I kept on going and completely missed it. What can I say? I'm only human. And even though I try to be as thorough as I can in bringing you the most comprehensive shots of all that is there to see in these photos, I tend to overlook a few things. This is why I've created the Lunar Explorer Archives, where I have included all the photos from this film and others not used in the movie, where you can pan and zoom on each and every detail of the photographs for yourself on your own computer. In the Lunar Explorer Archives, you will be amazed at all you will find, and after coming back to the same photos a few days later, you will find even more things that you missed the first time around. There is so much activity on the moon, it's hard to pinpoint one single anomaly above all the others. I originally intended to interview people such as John Lear, Richard Hoagland, Mike Barra, myself, and others, but due to scheduling problems and budgets, it didn't pan out. So... I've decided to make the rest of this film an audiovisual experience for you to explore. Look for geometric shapes, buildings, structures, and objects that appear to be underwater or cloudy areas, statues and UFOs. They're all in there. Look for them and enjoy this film as much as I have enjoyed making it. Thank you for watching Luna. <laughs>